Hello everyone. So in this video, we are going to go over uh, the while loop and the for loop and how we are going to use them. Okay, so last week we was talking about um, the F, F else, switch, case and all of that stuff, right? And these mainly are the branching. This time we are going to talk about loops where uh, we have two ways of like creating loops uh, first using while and the second one using for so let's return back before using loops and try to see what's the motivation actually behind loops so to look at the motivation so for example here I have um, let's say 10 integer numbers and I want to take them as an input and add each one of them so logically you are going to do the following read the number add to current sum and check if all numbers are added if yes in this case I just want to like execute next statement or um, that's it I'm just adding them and exiting for example okay so one way to do it is just manually write a scan f and uh, print f scan f for each number 10 times which is similar to this okay uh, and this is easy since it's like somehow uh, it's going to take some time so for example here you are having um, three lines for each for each statement so in this case you are going to write like 30 lines for uh, just like the 10 numbers but the question now is what if I asked you to write 100 numbers right so in this case do you are going to write around uh, let's say 300 lines if you are going to do it manually right so here's the first um, four lines as you can see and then you will continue the lines until um, writing all of them and this is actually um, somehow hard to do it right uh, even me I will not try to do it so instead of that we are going to use a while loop so the while loop actually is going to you will put a certain statement and tell the while loop please repeat this statement until a certain condition is satisfied okay so for example here I have starting here for initializing my variables right so here current sum equals to zero current number equals to zero and then asking the user to enter a first number scanning it and here if you can see this is used actually to add the numbers so current number that is scanned from the user which is here current sum which until now the sum is zero and then will update the new sum will be here right and the next number will be updated to the new sum and so on so I'm just a I'm just adding the numbers okay so how to do it we can do it in this way again we have our initialization for current number and current sum and then we are using a new variable which is called num input and mainly this variable will be used to control the loop okay which is the while loop in this case so for the while loop this is how we are going to write it having the variable with the condition okay and then after that I will have this statement which is exactly the same as the manual way right exactly the same but instead of going and doing it 10 times or instead of doing it 100 times manually this time I'm just putting this one and inside the while loop this will repeat 100 times okay so again print f enter number and then scan f um, the number and after that um, I'm going to do the addition right which is here getting the number adding it to the previous sum and updating the new sum what is this this is updating the condition variable what the meaning of that so if you didn't update the condition variable okay so for example starting with num input equals to one if nothing is updating inside the loop this will never change anything in the condition right and at this point maybe your while loop will go infinite number of times why because 
every time you are writing any loop, you have to have something to update your condition variable. Because every loop I'm going to check, hey, I'm satisfying the condition variable or no. So actually here, you will start with one, right? And then going to the while loop, is one less than 100? Yes. You will go to the next loop, two less than 100? Yes. And so on and so on and so on until going to 99. Is it less than 100? Yes. Go again. 100 is less than 100? No. And in this case, you will terminate and go outside this while loop. Okay. So as you can see here, I'm starting at the condition. If it is satisfied, I'm going to the statement and then updating and after that continuing until the condition is violated in this case I will stop uh, this loop so let's see a demo now which um, in this demo we will just go um, run this program so we have here uh, this is exactly the same one we had but this time I have only 10 we can just change it to 100 that's totally fine and this is the remaining of the program and I just added this line so that we can uh, print the final sum. So let's run this program. So gcc while.c while and then while. So enter number one. Okay. Um, let me add one or let's say 10 and then second number 10, third 10, 10, 10. I'm just adding 10, 10 times, right? And finally, sum equals to 100. This is valid also with any number you want to add. So let's say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and finally 10. And then the sum is 55, okay? So let's go here and try to comment the update condition okay and let's try to compile again run again so it will ask me for the first number second third fourth and as you can see can you see that enter number one enter number one and this will never end uh, 10 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Why it will never end? Okay, let me just terminate it here. Um, if you go here, you'll find that I will never update this, right? So every time it's comparing with just zero or one, okay? So because here actually this is zero and then plus one, this will be one, right? So every time it's comparing here to zero, so zero is always less than 10. So I'm, this loop will never terminate, will never, okay? This loop will be an infinite loop. So make sure every time you're writing a while loop to have your condition um, within the loop itself. Okay, so let's return back to the slides. So, for loops, we have the for loop, while loop, or do while loop. So actually the main main difference between the while and do while, that the while is checking the condition at the beginning of the loop. But if you are using do while, it's checking the condition by the end of the loop. Okay, this is the only difference between that. Um, again, as we said, you must have a termination condition. If you are not having termination condition in this case the loop will never stop okay also you need to do initialization condition outside the loop as you can see here this is the initialization outside the loop right because if you didn't initialize outside the loop how I can know anything about this variable right so you have to declare it initialize it before the loop okay so this is how actually the um, control flow. So you start with the initialization as we did, and then we have a certain code or block of code that we are just repeating. And every time I'm evaluating a certain condition. And finally, I'm going outside the loop and continue executing 
um, the statements we have in the main function. So let's see an example. Here we have um, initializa initialization statement which is char quit key equals to and here it's supposed to be space okay and then going to the loop itself which is saying while quit key not equals to q I'm going to implement the following two lines which is the printf and scanf right and in this case um, I'm asking the user enter q to quit and then scanning from the user a character okay so if the user entered q after getting this from here, I'm going to check the condition. If it is Q, I'm going to, if it is Q, I'm going to go here. Right? If it is not Q, I'm going to go here. This is not Q. Okay? This is one way actually to write this. Another way is again the initialization statement, which is quit key equals to space. Um, actually we are putting like any initialization at the beginning so that it's something different than the queue right but this time actually we used while one what is while one it's exactly the same as while and the condition inside the while is always true what the meaning that the condition inside the while is always true this means that the while condition will never stop the program it's very similar to when we took the condition the update of the condition right so while one is a while loop which will never stop except if we are having something to stop it something like what something like break so if you are having break inside a while loop or a for loop in this case it just go outside the loop okay will take you outside the loop so if we go here we'll find that um, again we are asking the user to enter Q to quit and then scanning this letter and asking here with F condition if quit key equals equals Q in this case break so although while is going to go infinite number of times since I have break which is satisfied in a certain condition in this case um, I'm going to terminate the while loop and again if the quit key is not equal to Q in this case you will never go to break and will continue the loop continue the loop and so on okay so here is actually if we want to um, have a certain number of um, counts with the while loop so here we started with the initialization as we did before but at the same time we have end num try equals to 10 right um, so uh, num try, let's say number of trials or something like that. So I want to run 10 times. Okay. So for example, you are going to ask the user enter Q to quit, enter Q to quit for 10 times. If the user didn't enter within the 10 times, that's it. I'm going to terminate my program. So here again, we went inside a while one, which will never terminate except if we have a break in the statements inside the while loop and then asking the user to enter and the scanning from the user and then using a switch case right quite key if it is Q in this case I will break if it is not Q which is the default statement I will print uh, you entered and I will just give you the character that you entered and I'm sure that this character is not Q another way again so if you look here here we use the switch case right um, now here I'm going to do the same thing and I will going to try for 10 times also but this time actually I will use um, F condition okay here again if Q equals to, or quit key equals to Q I will break um, and then if number of trials equals equals zero in this case I will say exiting please try again okay and then break and after that this is updating the condition variable right because num try here as you can see is starting from 10 right and here every iteration I'm taking one right and finally 
I'm comparing, if I reach it zero, in this case, I have to terminate the program because I'm having a break statement there. Okay. So always when you are dealing with um, loops, you have two ways to do it. Either to do the following. Start with maximum iteration equals to 10 and put the maximum iteration as the condition here and the update condition is adding one to your um, condition variable. The other way of doing it instead of starting from um, zero because here you are starting from zero and then going up one by one from here and finally when reaching the maximum which is here you are going to terminate it, right? Or we can do it in the other way which is starting here from the maximum iteration which is 10 okay and then here the condition is when number of iterations is greater than zero and the update will actually go down so you will start with 10 and then 9 8 7 um, 6 and so on so these are the two ways also you can have like whatever the step count so instead of going from 10 to 9 to 8 you are going to go 10 8 6 uh, 4 and so on okay so you can control that whatever the way you want so here the comparison between both of them so the initialization in case of you are going to decrement must be maximum iteration if you are going to increment it is zero again if you are going to decrement the condition is at zero if you are going to increment the condition is at maximum iteration and finally here you are taking one each iteration here you are adding one each iteration okay so for now let's see an example with each other so um, in this program we want to ask the user to enter his age and then check if the age is negative or greater than 130 if yes then keep asking the user to enter the right age if you remember we did that before with if conditions but when we did it we used exit zero and that's it right so if the user entered the wrong number uh, in this case we are just giving him an error message and that's it terminating the program but now we are going to um, say to the user hey you have to enter the right age and if the user didn't enter the right age you are going to ask the user again hey enter the right age enter the right age until the user enters the right age okay so let's try this with each other now okay so let's start our program here and I will start by just having declaration um, for my variables so my first variable actually is just user age because this is what I'm going to ask the user to enter so I don't have to initialize it and I will use another uh, variable which will be valid user age and actually this variable will be my main variable or the variable for terminating the condition okay so mainly I'm going to use it with the while loop so valid user age equals to zero and then I will have a while loop so while and now I'll say okay while valid user age equals equals zero so in this case I'm saying while this variable equals equals zero execute whatever inside the while right if the, this value changes, in this case, don't execute anything. Okay? And then, inside the while loop, I will do the following. I will just go and... Um, let me just write here, ask the user to enter his age. And then print f. Please enter your age. Okay, and then scan f. Since this is end, so I'm going to write user age. And then after doing that, the user now entered an age, right? So 
let's return back to last week and remember the branching I'm going to take whatever the user entered and try to say okay if the user age is greater than 0 and less than 130 in this case I will just tell the user thank you very much for entering your age and then finally I want to exit the while loop right and to exit the while loop you have to have valid user age anything in a state of zero right so in this case you have to change its value and then what if the user didn't enter the right age in this case I will have now I have else in this case the else will be just printing to the user please en enter a number or an age which is between 0 and uh, 130 right so let's whatever we said now let's try to write it so I will start by the F so I will say F user age is greater than or equals to or let's say greater than 0 okay and since I have the other condition which is less than 130 so in this case I can use and and if you remember from the last week and and is actually to make sure that these two conditions are satisfied with each other right so here I will have user age um, less than or equals to 130 so if it, this is the case I will just print F thanks for entering your age and then after that I have to go outside the loop to go outside the loop just change this into any other value whatever the value will choose if it is not zero in this case it will terminate the loop so let me choose it as one and you can choose any other variable and in this case I will terminate this F and I will go to the other condition which is else so else I will just print to the user please enter a valid age um, which is non negative and less than 130 okay so since I didn't change the value of valid age here the next step actually that you are going to go here you will find yeah it's still zero so you are going to execute again so this means that you are going to ask the user again and if the user entered the wrong age you are going to ask again ask again ask again and you will never stop until the user enters the right age so let's try this with each other so I'll save it here and its name is age while so I'm going here let's clear and then uh, age while age while wow okay this is line 23 going here line 23 we'll find that um, 23 is here um, can't see any error except that I'm forgetting to terminate the else brace um, returning back here I think this will solve the problem uh, knob so 23 expected declaration or statement at the end of input okay um, let's try to make sure that we are having all braces in the right place so the while loop here is terminated down there and this is not right so it's supposed to terminate here because the last termination is related to the main function right okay so I think now we will not have any error okay great so age while uh, enter your age let me start with just regular age and I will not write my actual age so let's write 15 this is perfect um, let's run the program again and try to play with it like I'll start with negative 5 
Um, wow. It's supposed to return back. So what we did wrong here. Um, okay. So this is the wrong thing we did. That is supposed to be or instead of and, right? Because and, I'm saying that the user age must be less than zero and um, sorry, greater than zero and less than 130, right? Um, so, but I think this is this is right. So if user age, yep, I think this is right. We are supposed to have negative five is not in this range. So in this case, we are going to go to else and then please enter a valid age. We are supposed to get this message. Um, this is for the while and this is here. Um, okay, let's return back to Enter 150. Okay, there's something wrong here. Mm -hmm. Oh, what I did here is not. Okay, let's try now. Um, negative five. Okay, so negative 5, uh, like 140, again, it's asking me again. I will never be able to um, get out of this loop until I put a regular age, which, for example, 40 will just say thanks for entering your age, and that's it. Okay, so going back to our slides. So let's see now the for loop. So the for loop actually is written in this way. So starting with having initialization statement. So for example, I will just say, okay, for int i equals to zero. So here I have um, initializing i equals to zero. Okay. And after that, termination expression and let's say my termination expression would be i less than 10. And then the last thing, update statement. So let's say my update statement is i plus plus or plus plus i. And at a certain point, we'll see that there is some diff, like there is a difference between using this one and this one, but inside the for loop, both of them are okay. Okay? We will see after that what is the difference if we use them outside the for loop. But for the for loop itself, these are exactly the same. So mainly the for loop is putting everything in the same line with the for, right? In the while, we are doing the initialization before the while. And inside the while, we are putting the termination expression. And then after that, within the while loop itself, we are having the update statement. So in this case, if you just compare between them, you will find that here is initialization statement before the while. The expression or determination expression is within the while loop itself. And finally, updating will be within the body here. Right? This is update statement. Okay? So... And again, like using for loop, using while loop, both are very similar to each other. Okay, let's see an example for that. So here I have four iteration count equals to zero, iteration count less than 10, iteration count plus plus, right? If you want to write it with the while formatting, you will take this one, put it before the while, okay? You will take this one, put it with the while itself, and finally, the update condition will be within the loop, and here, whatever statements you have, okay? Which is the same thing here, the loop statement 
to execute repeatedly. So this is actually the main difference between both of them, like using a for loop and using a while loop. Sometimes people prefer the for loop uh, for being like everything in the same line so somehow you are organizing your thinking and putting everything there but at a certain point you'll find that okay it's better to have like if, if something is known with known count uh, it's better to use for loop directly and that's it if something was like a count which is not known and we are terminating at a certain condition it's better actually to use the wire loop and we will see different examples with both of them okay so the last thing I want to say today is um, going with nested for. And again, we are having nested while. It's very similar to what we had before, which is the nested F condition, right? If you remember that, and we did it last thing on Thursday. So we can have nested loops. And as you can see here, I have the first loop for i equals to 0, i less than 10, i plus plus, and then the inner loop, h for j equals to 0, j less than 10, and then j plus plus. And if you see here, and finally I can here have any statement, which is print f um, i and j, for example, something like that, okay? So if you look here, you'll find that how this is executed. So you'll start here with i equals to 0. Okay, so this is the first iteration in the outer loop. And then you are going inside the inner loop and you will take all the iterations there. So you have i equals to 0 and then you will have j equals to 0 until 9. Once you are done with the inner loop, you will return back here to increment the outer loop. So i equals to 1. And returning back down the, there, i equals to 1 and j you will go from 0 to 9 and so on. So we are always using the outer and inner loops or as we name it the nested loops or net nested for in this example to like let's say fill a matrix. So if you have a matrix like this one to fill it Suppose this is i equals to 0, this is j equals to 0, 1, 2, 3, right? So you will start here, you will fill this value, and then this value, this value, this value, and this is actually corresponding to i equals to 0 and going to the inner loop which is 0, 1, 2, 3, and then going to i equals to 1, and then going to the inner loop filling these, going to i equals to 2, and going to the inner loop, filling these, and so on. Okay, so let's see this with each other, um, and this will conclude our uh, video today. So here, let me get it. I think I'm just preparing it here. Yes, and um, everything is ready, and I'm just printing here, um, like return. And if you look, where is it? Okay where we are printing it we are printing it with this for loop so i will start here okay i equals to zero and then we'll go here okay from j equals to zero to j equals to nine and i will print a new line and i will go again and update i equals to one take j from zero to nine new line go back again right so I'm just having new line every um, one iteration from the outer loop okay let me write here this is the outer loop okay so let's run this and see how it's going to uh, appear uh, with what we did here so the name here is nested so GCC nested let's see nested nested as you can see I told you like it's very similar to matrix and here the value of i is 0 the value of j is 0 and the first iteration in the outer loop i equals to 0 and as you can see here i equals to 0 here i equals to 1 i equals to 2 until i equals to 
9. And then if you went in the horizontal horizontal direction, you will find that j equals to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 until 9. Right? So this is how actually we are using the uh, nested loops mainly to fill something similar to matrix. Okay? So this was the last thing in our video today. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the upcoming videos.